Good afternoon and welcome to the Art of Finding Funding. This new series will feature subject matter experts from federal funding agencies and grant writing consultants to help paint the picture and define the landscape for finding funding in the arts and social sciences. My name is Enrica Ziller, Research Education Programs and Outreach Manager in the Office of Research and Innovation at the University of Texas at Dallas. Today's featured speaker is Dr. Melissa Minzer, a Senior Program Analyst in the Office of Research and Analysis at the National Endowment for the Arts. She manages the Research Grants in the Arts Program, which supports research projects focused on the value and the impact of the arts on humans, communities, and societies, as well as the Research Labs Program, which supports transdisciplinary research teams grounded in the social and behavioral sciences who are tasked in yielding empirical insights about the arts for the benefit of arts and non-arts sectors alike. Melissa completed her doctorate in human development from the University of Maryland and has bachelor's degrees in psychology and studio art. Dr. Menzer, welcome. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everybody. Again, my name is Melissa Menzer, and I am a senior program analyst in the Office of Research and Analysis at the National Endowment for the Arts. Thank you to Enrica and the University of Texas at Dallas uh, for the opportunity to share uh, with you information and resources about the funding programs we have at the National Endowment for the Arts. Um, in this presentation, I'll overview the National Endowment for the Arts and our various funding programs and how to apply. Again, feel free to use the Q&A box to ask questions throughout the presentation, and I'll try to answer as many as I can um, after I finish going through the material. Uh, next slide, please. All right, one second. Okay, a little bit about the NEA. The National Endowment for the Arts was established as a independent federal agency by Congress in 1965. Our current mission is to strengthen the creative capacity of our communities by providing all Americans with diverse opportunities for arts participation. We award over 2,000 grants each year that support our mission and goals to organizations of all sizes across all 50 states and six U.S. territories. Um, to give an example of how far our funding has spread in the state of Texas, Texas specifically, um, in the past five years, the NEA distributed more than $21 million in grants. Next slide, please. Okay. I'll turn to our direct grant programs momentarily, but first I want to mention that the National Endowment for the Arts offers partnership agreement grants to the U.S. territories, 50 designated state arts agencies, and six regional arts organizations. By law, 40% of the NEA budget appropriated by Congress must go to the states and regions. By supporting the state arts agencies and regional arts organizations, the NEA can make the arts available in many more communities than it could through our direct grant programs. There are grant opportunities available through these individual state arts agencies and regional arts organizations. And these can be another source of funding for your projects. For the state of Texas, for example, your state arts agency is the Texas Commission on the Arts and your regional arts organization is Mid-America Arts Alliance. You can find more information in the impact section of the NEA website um, under the state profile for Texas. And there's a lot of really interesting stuff in that profile as well. Um, the direct, uh, direct link is www.arts.gov slash impact slash state dash profiles slash Texas. Uh, next slide, please. Shifting gears to our direct grant making programs, most of our regular uh, direct grant programs are annual programs. On the left side of this slide, you'll see our flagship arts programming and engagement grants, which include Challenge America, grants for arts projects, and our town. On the right side of this slide is our research programs, the Research Grants in the Arts program and the NEA Research Labs program. I'll explain a little bit more about what these programs are, uh, but before, before I do, uh, next slide please. Here's a pie chart of our funding allocations from uh, last fiscal year and across the five different uh, programs I overviewed in the last slide uh, across, all, across all states. 
Um, overall, we awarded over $57 million in awards, most of our funding going to the Grants for Arts Projects program. The amount of funding that's available and the funding caps for each award is important for you to, to consider as you think about your project, the level of competition you might face, and how best to right size your application to the award mechanism you choose to apply to. Next slide, please. Uh, first, I'll go in more detail about the arts projects programs before turning to the research awards programs. These funding opportunities occur, oh, <laughs> these funding opportunities occur each year for organizations, Challenge America, Grants for Arts Projects, and Our Town. Generally, for these three programs, your institute or your institution can submit one application per year per organization. Uh, there are certain requirements that you must meet in order to be eligible to apply for our arts project based funding opportunities. You have to be a nonprofit at the time of application. Um, other eligible organizations are units of state or local government or federally recognized tribal communities or tribes. Many colleges and universities are eligible given that they fall under one of these uh, categories. So for example, the University of Texas at Dallas, as you know, is a state run university and thus eligible for funding from the NEA. You must have a three year history of arts programming. You must also be in compliance with reporting requirements for previous NEA awards. And you must provide a one to one cost share or match of non federal funds. This match can be achieved in a variety of ways, such as staff salary, in kind donations of space, donated supplies, etc. The match can be a combination of these sources and there's a listing of, of all the um, all, a lot of options for for this on our website. The matching requirement is something important to keep in mind for the NEA funding broadly. Um, we want to see investment and commitment from the applicant organization itself and or other entities that are involved in the project, which can show the value and the importance of the work you want to do. Basically, for every dollar we make in an award, we want to see a return of investment of at least a dollar. Next slide. Uh, the Challenge America program primarily supports small organizations to extend the reach of the arts to populations that are underserved. All grantees must address how their organization or audience has been underserved. This is defined by our legislation and agency policy and refers to those who uh, those whose opportunities to experience the arts are limited by geography, ethnicity, economics, or disability. All awards are $10,000 awards with the required one to one match. So if you request $10,000, you have to show that you have another $10,000 in match. This program includes a, uh, an abbreviated application and robust technical assistance. The deadline is typically in April of each year. Uh, next slide, please. The NEA's largest funding stream, as you saw in the pie chart before, um, is the Grants for Arts Projects a program. Applications are submitted to one of 15 artistic disciplines at either the February or July deadline each year. Uh, next slide. Here you'll, here you'll see the 15 different artistic disciplines. There's arts education, artistic communities, dance, design, folk and traditional arts, literary arts, local arts agencies, media arts, museums, music, musical theater, opera, presenting and multidisciplinary works, theater, um, and visual arts. Guidelines for uh, each discipline are posted on our website. For a project, you would choose the appropriate artistic discipline based on the content of your project and follow the guidelines and application instructions for, for that particular discipline. And I'll, I wanna pause here and say that if you don't know which discipline is best for your project, feel free to reach out to our staff who can help you figure out which, which discipline would be the, the best fit. Next slide, please. Again, deadlines are in February or July of each year. Funding is available for all stages of the artistic process. That can include creation, presentation, and exhibition, 
arts education and enrichment, as well as services to the field, such as conferences and professional development. Um, awards range from $10,000 to $100,000 and do require that one-to-one -one match. And the project timeline can be for up to two years. Slide, please. The Our Town program provides support for creative placemaking projects. Um, so what do we mean by creative placemaking? The most simple definition is about strengthening local communities through arts and culture. Creative placemaking is where arts, culture, and design activities are deliberately integrated into efforts that strengthen communities. And successful Our Town projects ultimately lay the groundwork for systemic changes that sustain the integration of arts, culture, and design into local strategies. There are some additional requirements for the Our Town program. Um, eligibility does require a partnership between a nonprofit and a local government. Um, grants range from $25,000 to $150,000, again, with that one to one match. And the deadline is typically in August of each year. Um, in addition to arts project funding, where the focus of the project is providing arts engagement and creation opportunities to the public, um, we also have two separate funding mechanisms for research, where the focus of the project is on conducting research or studies on the value and the impact of the arts for individuals and societies. Um, generally, uh, you can submit more than one application per year per organization under these two research programs though your institution can only receive up to one new award per year across these two programs. Also note that you can apply to these programs in addition to the other arts project programs like Challenge America, Grants for Arts Projects, or Our Town. The key here is that all of the applications that you submit must be distinctly different from each other. Um, as an FYI, and Enrica already mentioned this, I am the primary contact for the two research programs, and so I'll spend a little bit more time on them because I know them the best. Slide, please. Um, in the research office at the NEA, we're interested in research that focuses on the understanding, uh, or rather focuses on understanding, the value and the impact of the arts for individuals and societies. Some of the broad questions we're interested in focus on understanding the factors that affect health and vitality um, of arts participation and arts and cultural assets, and the direct and or indirect benefits of the arts for individuals and or communities. Next slide, please. Um, so for example, we're interested in health benefits of the arts, such as how arts participation may influence or, or be associated with neurological, emotional, social, cognitive, and physical well-being. Uh, we're also interested in the economic value of the arts, as well as how arts education is associated with academic achievement, among other research areas. It may also be helpful to know that our work and the research that we support um, through our funding programs come from many different sectors beyond the arts sector itself, um, such as economics, medicine and health, education, psychology, arts management, um, and community planning, uh, for example. But this is no not exhaustive. Um, there's certainly other fields that are um, also eligible for funding from us. Um, and we support a variety of research methods as well um, in these different sectors. And these include qualitative, quantitative, and mixed method designs, as well as quasi-experimental and experimental designs, case studies, and single group designs, just to name a few. Met it might also be helpful to know that some investigators successfully use NEA funding as seed funding to support pilot or feasibility studies in order to get funding or apply for funding from larger funding agencies with higher funding caps um, for uh, like uh, the National Institutes of Health or the National Science Foundation. Uh, 
Within the NEA funding sphere, though, your, your choice of which uh, NEA research funding mechanism to apply to can be important to your application success. Um, so let's take a closer look at each of these programs to get a better sense of what the value, or rather what, what the NEA, excuse me, is looking for in competitive applications. Next slide, please. To begin, let's overview the research grants in the arts program. Um, this program funds research studies that encompass a wide range of areas that focus on the value and the impact of the arts for individuals and communities. Um, so, for example, we're interested in factors that enhance or inhibit arts participation or arts and cultural assets, detailed characteristics of arts participation or arts and cultural assets and their interrelationships, individual level outcomes of arts participation, as well as societal or community level outcomes of arts and cultural assets. You can propose either primary data collection projects or general data analysis projects or combination of the two. Um, the key is that all research studies conducted under a research grant in the arts award must include data analysis activities. In other words, we do not fund projects that are focused exclusively on data acquisition. Primary data collection projects must also include a plan to ensure fidelity of the data collection and program or therapy implementation uh, through routine monitoring or oversight and oversight. Yeah. Next slide, please. Eligible applicants under the Research Grants in the Arts program are one of three types, and you've heard these before. Uh, nonprofit, tax exempt, 501c3 status US organizations are nonprofits, um, units of state or local government, or federally recognized tribal communities or tribes. And of course, this may include, but is not limited to colleges and universities. You can uh, submit more than one application, as I mentioned before, under this program each year, as long as the projects are distinctly different. And you can also apply to other NEA funding, funding programs as well. Um, again, the project must be distinctly different. Next slide, please. Uh, research grants in the arts funding requests may range from $10,000 to $100,000 and do require that non-federal one-to-one match. And so, for example, if you request $50,000, um, then you must show another $50,000 in match from other sources. Next slide, please. Um, shifting gears a little bit uh, through the NEA Research Labs program, we support, tr we support transdisciplinary research partnerships to engage in, in a research agenda. Each of the NEA research labs have a special focus in one of three topic areas, the arts, health, and social emotional well-being, the arts, creativity, cognition, and learning, and lastly, the arts, entrepreneurship, and innovation. And I apologize that I said those in a different order than is on the slides. <laughs> and, oh, thank you. NEA research labs are intended to serve as hubs or centers of excellence in the domain of interest. And as a result, they're required to complete a number of activities under their lab award, such as developing a research agenda, conducting a keystone study or a series of studies, producing research reports, and disseminating products, data, tools, or services uh, for the public, researchers, and practitioners. Next slide, please. Um, eligible applicants for the NEA Research Labs program are U.S. institutions of higher education specifically, or nonprofit tax nonprofit tax exempt 501c3 status U.S. organizations that have specifically a three-year history in behavioral or social science research, and also history of communicating findings of that research. Unique to this program is that eligible applicants are those that have never received an NEA Research Lab Award before. Um, our lab awardees are listed on our website at www.arts.gov. Um, and I did want to point out at this point that um, the University of Texas at Dallas is not currently an NEA Research Lab recipient, and so your faculty are eligible to apply. And I do encourage you to reach out if you have questions about, about this. Next slide, please. 
Um, there are additional application requirements to consider for this particular program. Um, NEA Research Labs requires a partnership that involves multiple organizations. Uh, partnering organizations are not required to meet the same eligibility requirements as the official applicant organization. However, at least one of the partnering organizations must be a nonprofit arts organization. In addition, the project team must be interdisciplinary um, and include members from two or more research specialties. Uh, you can again, you can submit more than one application under this particular program each year, as long as the projects are, di are different. And you can also apply to other funding mechanisms as well. Again, those pro uh, those proposals must be different. Next slide, please. So the NEA Research Labs awards are up to $150,000 awards um, and do require that one to one non federal match at the time of application. The initial award is expected to cover a 12 to 24 month period of performance. And the NEA Research Labs program also allows for non competitive subsequent awards of up to four times. So theoretically, a lab could be supported for 10 years. More detail about renewal options can be found on our guidelines, but I think this particular piece of the labs program is the one of the attractive components of this program because you have the potential to continue doing research either within the same research project or different types of research project projects under that same umbrella. Um, and so an engagement of 10 years may be um, may be attractive to some faculty and schools. Next slide, please. OK, so to recap, here are the five funding programs that the NEA has to offer um, with their general deadlines. Note that usually guidelines for the new cycles um, are posted a couple months before the deadline, so you can keep an eye on our website or contact the program staff to get an update on that. Um, Again, Challenge America, the deadline usually is in April, and these are grants of $10,000 to, uh, $10, to small and mid sized organizations. Uh, grants for arts projects has deadlines in February and July, and grants are $10,000 to $100,000 for arts projects. Our town grants, the deadline is in August, and grants are $25,000 to $200,000 for creative placemaking projects. Um, and research grants in the arts, as well as research labs, both have a deadline in March. Um, research grants in the arts has $10,000 to $100,000 awards, and any research labs has um, awards up to $150,000. Um, there is a link on this slide uh, for the program staff contact information. It's basically a listing of all of the program uh, staff of the various uh, uh, grant programs listed here. Um, and you can do you can also see that at www.arts.gov slash grants slash grants dash for dash arts dash projects slash contacts. Um, okay. Um, back to talking about all of these programs together. Here's the general timeline of events. There is an application process uh, that includes two parts and a panel process. After panel review, NEA staff reconcile panel recommendations uh, with the funds that are available. Um, and recommended awards are forwarded to the National Council on the Arts uh, where they're reviewed in open session um, at the National Council of the Arts meeting. Uh, from there, the council makes recommendations to the chairman of the National Endowment for the Arts. Um, and once the chairman approves, um, approves the recommendations, uh, applications or applicants are notified of their status. Uh, okay, um, so regardless of the program you apply to, all of the programs require a two step process when applying. Uh, part one is where you'll work with two federal government systems the System for Award Management or SAM.gov and Grants.gov. You'll need up to date registrations and the correct permissions uh, through these systems to apply for funding. Universities tend to have an Office of Sponsored Research or another department uh, that manages uh, grants. If interested in this in these opportunities or any other other funding opportunities, 
um, you'll want to get in contact with them to ensure that the university has up to date information for part one of the application. Um, as a reminder, SAM.gov and Grants.gov are federal government systems and registration in both systems is always free. Um, note that as faculty at the University of Texas at Dallas, if you do want to submit um, applications under any of these programs that I've discussed so far, your institution is the one that actually submits the application, not the individual. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're when you're preparing your material. Um, so once you have current accounts in both systems and the actual form you submit, uh, the actual form you submit is the SF-424 form. Um, this form provides basic information about your school and won't take too long to fill out. Um, you aren't required to submit any specific details about your project in this step other than giving us some minor details of, about the organization itself and some of the key personnel that will be on the project. But basically think of this step as submitting your intent to apply. It's a way to express your interest in submitting the full application. Next slide, please. OK, so part two is then our actual NEA grant application form. Um, it's where you'll submit the bulk of your application and all the specifics about your request. You'll put together a university information, the proposal budget, arts programming and our operating history, and then the narrative of your application. The grant application form is submitted through our own NEA online platform, which is called the Applicant Portal, and you can see a screenshot of what that looks like on the login page on the left hand side of, side of the slide. Um, and then on the right hand side of the slide is what you would see when you log in. The different tabs that are here. Um, and this is called the Applicant Portal. Uh, the guidelines for each of our funding programs, which are all posted on our website at arts.gov, include step-by-step -step instructions on using the applicant portal and how to apply. The instructions for part two include an application instructions document. Um, you should definitely take a look at that before you, before you start. This document goes through all of the questions you need to answer for, that you need to answer for part two, including, but not, uh, including not just the questions themselves, but also helpful tips, screenshots of the applicant portal, and the character counts for each application uh, field. So you can compile all of your application content, and then you'll uh, then you'll enter all of that information into the NEA's applicant portal um, during the designated time frame, which is typically about a week for a week period uh, shortly after the grant stock of deadline. And we do post those dates in all of our guidance. Um, Um, applications receive three levels of review. The first level um, is the citizen panel, which is made up of experts in the field. The panel is diverse in terms of geography, gender, ethnicity, and expertise. There typically are four to six people serving on each panel, including one layperson. And applicant, uh, panelists uh, review about 20 to 40 applications, depending on the program. Um, and usually uh, program staff give uh, panelists about five weeks to review applications. Um, I do want to pause here to walk through the panel review process a little bit more. Uh, panelists evaluate e each application based on two overarching criteria identified in each of the guidelines, and that's artistic excellence and artistic merit. And so it's important that your application speaks directly to each of these subcriteria under artistic excellence and artistic merit. Um, the subcriteria for excellence and merit do vary depending on the funding program. So you'll please do look very carefully at that review criteria when you um, consider which, which program to apply to and consider um, what you need to include in your application. Um, as I mentioned before, at level two, panel recommendations are then submitted to the National Council on the Arts for review and approval. And then level three is the chairman. Uh, this person signs the, the approved grants. Um, if applicants are not recommended for an award, uh, we encourage them to find out why. 
uh, by calling the appropriate discipline specialists. And depending on the program, panel comments may be available to share with the applicants. Uh, with the applicants. Uh, next slide, please. As you, as you prepare your application, here are some tips to keep in mind. Um, first, carefully read the full guidelines before you start. Um, on our website, there are a number of additional applicant resources, including um, videos, to video tutorials, and other types of documents and materials. Um, work with your partners to answer each component of the application as, as applicable. Um, check in with your organization's development sponsored programs or research administration office. The folks in these office um, will be able to provide guidance on what they need from you um, in order to submit your application. Again, consider the review criteria as you prepare your application and definitely start early. <laughs> Generally speaking, our guidelines do not change substantially from year to year. Um, so using a previous year's guidelines is usually very helpful um, in framing in, in preparing for, for your upcoming application. If you do apply for support, as I mentioned before, it's often helpful to reach out to obtain panel feedback on your proposal, regardless of if you receive the grant or not. Another great way to learn about what panelists are looking for when they review applications is to volunteer as a panelist, and more on that in just a second. Um, and do remember that we're here to help you. Um, contact us by email or by phone with your questions. Um, we're, it, we're available to talk to you throughout the year and not just when we're accepting applications. So hopefully having this conversation now will be helpful for you as you think about applying to, um, to the programs that have deadlines next year. Next slide, please. Uh, briefly, I do want to mention that we have a couple of opportunities for individuals, um, individual fellowships with, uh, within our Literary Arts Division. Um, the creative fellowships are in um, creative writing fellowships are in fiction, poetry, and creative nonfiction um, that enables re uh, recipients to set aside time for writing, research, travel, and general career advancements. These are non-matching grants for twenty-five thousand dollars. We also have translation project awards, uh, which enable recipients to translate a work from other languages into English. Um, Non-matching grants here are for uh, $12,500 or $25,000, depending on the artistic excellence and merit of the project. Slide, please. Okay, um, we are always looking for new voices to bring into our panel process. Um, it's a great way to connect with us and to really learn about what the process is like from the other side. Um, we have been told that it's a great uh, professional development opportunity. Um, so if you're interested in putting your name in the ring, um, do fill out the form that's on our website, or you can also contact me uh, um, uh, afterwards um, and, and we'll, we'll see what we can do. I can't guarantee at all that we'll be able to place everybody who puts who volunteers. Um, but we try to do our best to put to place as many of those volunteers as we can. Um, OK, so this is a screenshot of our website. To find the guidelines for all of our grant opportunities, you can go to the website at www.arts.gov. Um, select grants from the tabs shown here. So that's like right, it's in a little uh, red circle. On the, on the top of the slide. Um, this will take you to the next page, which is our grants opportunities page. And this will have a listing of links to our guidelines for grants for arts projects, Challenge America, Our Town, and the research awards, as well as grants for individuals. Um, from time to time, additional special opportunities may also be posted here um, as they arise. Um, great, so uh, that's that. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have either now um, or in the future. Um, feel free to use the chat to uh, um, ask your questions. Um, I hope this was helpful and uh, uh, informative. 
And thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Menzer. We do have a couple of questions in. Um, and again, I invite um, the audience to submit a couple more while we're discussing these. Um, the first one is what resources does the NEA have for faculty? Um, in terms, I'm, I'm not sure what exactly this, this question is about, but in terms of guidelines um, for every one of our, um, every one of our programs, we typically have a webinar that's specifically designed to talk about, like uh, provide more instruction, more technical assistance for people who are applying for that specific program. So I encourage you to read, to um, watch those webinars as they come up. Um, either live or, or in the archive. Um, the other great um, uh, resource is the program staff themselves. We are very open and willing to help you um, to understand what your questions are, to help you navigate the application process. Um, so definitely reach out. It, it's, it's, I think it's a valuable experience to reach out to our program staff to, to answer your technical questions. We do also have a um, public facing grant search tool, which I think is something that I lead most people to. Um, and I, I did not mention that in this uh, webinar, um, but it's a listing of all of our grants to date that we have awarded since 1998. Um, anything prior to that, I think they're in a separate uh, non digitized archive. Um, but these, but this particular resource is really, really helpful because it gives you an example, gives you many examples of projects that we've supported in the past um, so that you can kind of see where your project might fit. Um, those are some, some resources, but there's lots and lots of material that is in each of the guidelines um, that can direct you to additional resources that, that will help you with your application. Great. That helps. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. I'll be sure to get that, the link to the list of the grant awards and include it when we post this to the Office of Research and Innovation YouTube channel. Terrific. Um, and then another question that we've got in, and I, I think you mentioned this in, this, in the um, presentation, is there a cap on how many grants we can submit to the NEA in a year? That's a really great question. And all great questions so far. Um, so it really depends on the program. So typically speaking, um, Grants for Arts projects, Challenge America, and Our Town, um, you are only allowed to submit one application per year. So theoretically, you're only able to uh, receive one, uh, one grant per year. The research grants program, however, is a little bit different. You can submit as many applications as you want um, in a, any given cycle. Um, and this is this applies both to research grants in the arts as well as research labs. But the limitation here is that we would only be able to support up to one project during that particular cycle, one new project. So if, for example, uh, University of Texas at Dallas faculty submitted two research grants in the arts projects and then maybe three research labs projects, theoretically, we would only be able to support up to one of those of the five. Um, I do want to mention actually the with relation to the grants for arts projects specifically, there are some um, loopholes. It's not merely a loophole, but there are some um, extra opportunities that come up with this particular program specifically related to media arts. And you'd have to reach out to our media arts specialists to to, to um, get a little bit more detail on that. Um, but basically, my understanding is that um, uh, when you want to, say, do a recording of a, a performance, you may be able to find funding for the performance itself, but then also for the recording and separating those into two different, um, two different applications. The other way, the other limit, the other um, loophole for the grants and grants for arts projects program is the independent component versus parent component structure. Uh, so, for example, at the Uni University of Texas at Dallas, there might be um, several departments um, that are all interested in applying, um, and only one of them could actually apply. But then you also have um, independent components like a creative writing center, or a performing arts center, or a museum. These are these are organizational units that are 
within the organizational structure of the overarching parent structure, but they but they could technically operate on their own without the university. They might be on university land, but they might have their own 501c3 status um, number, or they might actually um, be still part of the part of the organization. And so, you'd have to check in with your your research administration office to see how the organizational structure is set up. So that so. The the answer is depends on the purpose, basically. <laughs> um, yeah. So I encourage you to definitely reach out to the program staff to, to ask more questions about the organizational piece and how many you can apply um, and how many you can um, get. OK, great, thank you. We do have another one in from the audience. Um, I see how many grants had a three year requirement for operations. I own a nonprofit arts organization who has been operating for the past five years before COVID. Now we have been inoperative for a year and a half. Would it, we still qualify as operating for three years from our past operating status before the pandemic occurred? Another great question. Um, so yes, definitely you would be considered eligible um, for funding and I, and one of the things that happened over the past couple of years because of COVID, we've definitely um, loosened our limitations or restrictions around the three year operating history. And so when you apply, instead of um, reporting on the most recent three years, you might go back a little bit more and say maybe applying, um, reporting on your first three years of operation as an institution or as, a, as an organization. Um, so yes, we do have some flexibilities there. Excellent. That, that was a good question. Very specific too. <laughs> um, thank you for sharing your time, talent, and resources with the attendees and community at large, Dr. Menzer. And audience, thank you for joining us today. Our team would appreciate any feedback you might have about the Art of Finding Funding series. Please click through the survey link found in the Q&A chat to share. And to view a full list of the Office of Research and Innovation events, including these that are coming up this fall, please visit utd.link slash research calendar. Thank you and have a great afternoon, everyone.